friends, it's Carolyn Zook here with Seasick Stitch, and today is Saturday, February 25th, 2023. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch. I'm so glad that you are here. Thank you so much for spending part of your day or your evening with me. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for those of you who watched my Shop With Me Market video, um, either in full or in part. Um, I It was a long one four and a half hours. I think that is the longest, that is the record for the longest video I've ever done. Um, but I appreciate those of you who watched it. Um, and I know it took a lot of, a lot of your time to watch it. So I certainly appreciate it. Um, and hopefully you found some goodies that you were not planning on finding. So it was so much fun to do. And again, I just love Gary and Ronnie and their website. Um, they have such a great website. That's so easy. Um, to look through all the goodies that will be coming out at market. A couple of you said, I'm not watching it because I don't want to be enabled, <laughs> which is fair enough. Uh, but again, thank you so much. And thank you to Gary and Ronnie for having such a great, easy website and fastest shipping in, in, in the field, maybe even. So thank you again so much, everyone. That was so much fun. Um, we had not one, but two snow days this week. So I am so happy. <laughs> it was a break we all needed. Um, definitely needed it. I did not get hardly any snow by my house, actually, which is really funny because I am up in elevation a little bit. Uh, we got maybe a quarter inch or so. Um, but Portland proper, I am just south of Portland. They got 11 inches of snow. So things were a mess. Um, I ended up, it was really funny on Wednesday, Wednesday morning was fine. It was, it hadn't even started snowing or anything. Um, and I kind of had in my head, I'm like, I really want to work from home today. I really want to work from home today. And then one of, um, my colleagues texted me and said, you know what? Like, I'm going to work from home today because I don't want to, she bicycles to work. She's like, I don't want to bike in because the weather might turn bad later this afternoon. I'm like, great. That's all I needed. I'm going to work from home today too. We'll move our meeting online. Um, and as it turned out, things started getting really bad around three or four o'clock, I believe. So I worked from home on Wednesday and then classes were canceled on Thursday, which did impact me. So I still had meetings. I still had to work and everything on Thursday. I just worked from home, but I did not have my classes on Thursday. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes people do hold their classes over Zoom and sometimes they don't. Both of my classes, I canceled them. <laughs> we all needed a snow day. I still had meetings and work to do and that type of thing. Fridays, I don't teach. But if I did teach, um, I would have canceled classes as well on Friday. We're supposed to get more snow tonight and then more snow Monday morning. So we will see. I think everything's going to melt. Uh, but tomorrow, though, because I think we're supposed to be in the 40s tomorrow. But then they're saying it's going to snow again on Monday morning. So we'll see. It's been very fun. I wish I had gotten more snow by me um, so that, you know, so I could see it because I think it's really pretty. But um, yeah, that's where we're at. I'm so excited. I'm so, oh my gosh, it was just the break we needed. Um, we had a stitchy Zoom call this morning, which was so much fun. So thank you so much to those of you who joined us for that. That is through the magazine monthly challenge, cross stitch challenge group uh, that I co-run with my dear friend Robin from Bird's Eye Stitches. It is a Facebook group. I always have it linked down in the description box below. So if you want to check it out, you do not only have to stitch on magazine pieces, which I think is the number one myth about our group. Um, we do encourage it. Um, but, um, and for some of the challenges and that type of thing, um, we might require that it be a magazine piece, but certainly to participate in the monthly we have a monthly theme and a monthly acrostic. They do not have to be um, magazine pieces. Um, so uh, don't let that deter you. We would love to have you join us. And we do about monthly um, stitchy Zoom calls at the end of the month. And we try to do monthly um, pop-up challenges as well. We just wrapped up Be My Specialty, which Robin ran for us, uh, which was a Valentine's Day. Get it? Be My Specialty. Be My Valentine. And it was all about specialty flosses, specialty fabrics, specialty stitches. Um, so it's really, really a fun group, I think. But of course, I'm biased. I know that. <laughs> uh, but we had our stitchy Zoom call. And so that was so nice uh, for those who were able to join us. It was so much fun. And then I went and got groceries. 
Um, I was actually treated very rudely by a vendor in the aisle. It was very um, uncalled for. Uh, I actually complained to the manager, which I don't think I have ever done before, but it was very rude. Um, but I got my groceries, so I'm all set. If it does snow tonight or tomorrow or Monday morning, I am set. I have plenty of groceries to get me through, and of course, plenty of stitching and plenty of work too. Let's be honest. Um, so that is everything. So a couple questions that came up. Um, Deborah Quilts said, "Asked such a great question. I'm so glad you asked this, Deborah. What classifies a piece as a sampler? Oh my gosh, such a great question." So samplers, that's a really good question. It's actually quite hard to answer. I mean, at first I was like, well, um, it's a piece that that is a sampler, right? Like, so it has, that's super helpful, Carolyn, thanks. Um, it has, uh, usually it was where young girls would practice uh, their monograms, which is why a lot of, a lot of samplers have alphabets maybe multiple alphabets on them. And it's where young girls would practice their their monogram for when uh, they grew up and got married and they would stitch their monogram in their linens, um, I guess, so they didn't get mixed up or just as a signifier that this is our family. And so a lot of it was teaching the girls, one, how to stitch, two, how to stitch their monograms. So I have a couple examples here. So this is G. Legere, 1898 by Reflets de Soie. Soye, so sorry about the um, the pronunciation. I am sure I am butchering, butchering that. But you can see this is kind of what I would think of as a classic sampler, right? So you have an alphabet up here. You have some numbers. So if you want to, this is also a reference, right? So it's not only practicing, but it's a reference. How did I make that K? Okay, let me go back and see it. And then we have the very pretty kind of more monogrammy alphabet. And then we have some other little motifs in here. Uh, for whatever reason, right? Like they could stitch it on their linens. They could just be practicing their stitches. Maybe this is a house one, one of them lived in. Um, it just depends on the motifs. But this is an example of a very classic sampler. Um, so it was learned, it was taught either in school or at home as a way to kind of practice, um, to identify your linens. And you can see there's a border up there. So this I think of as a very classic. This is a, a reproduction. So this, the original piece is from 1898. So this is a good classic sampler. Um, a more modern sampler would be one I showed last week. This is Camberley Sampler by Rosewood Manor. And what you see here is there is an alphabet here. It is a very fancy alphabet. Again, thinking monogram, right? So this is a reference for your monogram. But you can also see there's some sample borders. So, and you see they're, they're incomplete because they're just samples of borders. So um, they, there's just little pieces, look at that border, oh my gosh, this piece is so pretty. Um, so there's just little motifs and little borders and alphabets to practice um, your stitching on. So this is kind of a more modern, I would say, take. Um, it's antique looking, but it is not a reproduction like the G Legier. Now, here's another one that I wanted to show you that I also am working on. This is called 1544 Band Sampler. This is by Works by ABC. And it's a, a, it's a band sampler, so it's um, a narrow piece of fabric. There's no alphabet in this. These are just motifs. They could be borders. Um, you could figure out the pattern and carry the border on. Uh, along if you wanted to, but this is just another way to think about samplers. Um, and this one was taken from a um, larger sampler, but even in the larger sample, like this is a reproduction taken from, like, sorry, it's kind of dark. There's no alphabet in there, right? It's just all kind of borders and motifs. So it can mean a lot of different things. Um, and it's a good question, what actually makes it a sampler? Um, I mean, usually I would say, well, when it has the alphabet, it's classified as a sampler. But as, as we know, that's not necessarily true because this one has no alphabet. So I think they are motifs that we are practicing or stitching on or that were reproductions of practicing or stitching. The other thing I want to show you is the Sampler Company's Ultimate Sampler Motifs Source Book by Brenda Keys. This is a book. It's a book book. 
You can get it at your local needlework shop and it's just full. I don't know if I can really show. It's just full of sampler motifs. You can see it on the front here. So there's just like, there's a section of people. There's a section of flowers. There's a section of trees of all types of sampler motifs. There's a section of alphabets in here. So again, this can work as a resource. Um, yeah, there's just pages and pages of designs and houses, churches, people, borders, more borders, angels, crowns. There's a whole page of crowns. Um, so she also has a book called Alphabets, Motifs, and Borders. So you can almost create your own sampler or if, um, say on this, you want to replace something, an image, you can go to this book. And I say that because I'm going to replace a couple of these images on here. Um, and how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to go in here and find something that I like that feels more like me and I'm going to replace it. So I'm around the same size and I'm going to replace it. So I hope that makes sense, Deborah. Um, that is my best explanation. I am sure there are some of you out there that can maybe even explain it better than I can or has a clearer answer of to the question of what makes a sampler a sampler. Um, because as we have seen, um, just having an alphabet is not necessarily always a sampler. Um, I think it depends on um, also who you ask. So let me know your thoughts. I know there's a lot of you out there with a lot of great um, wisdom. So let me know. And I look forward to sharing what I find from your comments with you next week. And thank you so much, Deborah, for that question. Um, I did have another question. Well, not really a question, but um, a response. But I'm going to, I'll do that when, during my whips when I show you my whips. So first up in terms of stitching, we have a finish. <laughs> I posted this everywhere on Facebook because I was so, so happy. It is Lovebirds. Um, it is done. It is finished. I need to iron it still, but, um, Lovebirds is complete. I need, like I said, I need to iron it. This is on, um, 28 count linen by Picture This Plus in the color Cabernet. Um, I stitched it with two strands of DMC Blanc. Look how much space I have. I can almost stitch this another two times. I'm not going to, but I have a lot more space to do something else with this fabulous fabric. Um, and I really am looking forward to getting this one framed and put into the framer. I think I'm going to take it to um, a place that will do mat. So Acorns doesn't do matting or uh, glass. And I think I'm going to take it to a place that does matting and see what they can come up for, come up with for matting for this one. Cause I think this is just so pretty. I loved it. It only took me 17 hours in total to finish it. Um, so, and this is my second year of whips finish. So done. So happy with that. And that means that next year I can start a new Valentine's day piece, which I am excited about because, um, I, um, I have like two other like hearts that are, in my in mind that I have tagged um, that I want to start. So super excited about that. So that is Lovebirds done. That is, oh, I just put it down. That is from the February 2021 Just Cross Stitch magazine. I'm going to cover it up. You see I have a few other ones that, this is my address I'm covering up, a few other tags or flagged, um, flagged pieces in there. So we will get to those when we get to them. But yay, I'm so excited to have Lovebirds done. And then what else did I work on this week? I worked on my 25 seven piece. Now that lovebirds is done is Easter cross for the second time. <laughs> I finished one already. Um, this is Easter cross by Lana Rudolph. This is what it will look like when it's all done. Take a look at those beads while I have this up here. Um, and this is in the uh, April, 2020 just cross stitch. So what the cover looks like, and this will be a gift. Both of these will be a gift for friends. Um, and let me show you the one I already finished because this leads me to my next question. Well, comment Terry. Okay. So I'll show you this. 
So here is my finished piece. And if you recall, here we go. If you recall, I was having a lot of trouble. I'm using the called for beads. There we go. Called for beads and it calls for the bigger bead with the little bead on top, which you can see I got it to work in the center there. Um, all the other ones, the little bead on top just simply fell through because the hole was too big in the top bead. Um, so I couldn't get it to work. And I'm kind of bummed. I mean, it looks fine, like as it is. Like, I don't think anybody would really know, but I really do like the look of the bigger beads. So I was thinking about it, and then Terry said something, commented and said, Hey, did you ever figure that out? Um, maybe try a sequins, because the beads won't, like a sequin, because the beads probably won't fall through the sequin hole, which I thought was a great idea, Terry. So thank you so much for that idea. Um, I am going to definitely keep that in mind. I did go to Joann's and I bought these beads, which is a 6-0 check seed beads, which I think some of them, their holes are a little bit smaller. It might not be though, now that I'm looking at it. Um, so I'm going to try these. I think they are, I think the color will work fine. Um, I'm going to try them and see if they work. Yeah, I'll see if they work. They do look smaller. If I can figure out how to open the container. <laughs> if you know how to open these, can you please tell me? I haven't tried super hard because I'm afraid like it's just going to go off spewing everywhere. But do you know how to open these? I've tried like pulling and pulling. Not super hard, but if anybody has ever opened one of these before, please let me know how to open it. I'm going to give this a try. If this doesn't work, then Terry, I am going to use your suggestion of buying sequins um and the sequins go in the center and they go on each of these red uh the bigger red um dots that you see there so terry thank you so much for that suggestion that's a great suggestion um and like i said if the beads don't work that i bought then i will definitely um use your suggestion so this is my new 25 7 piece this is where i got to on easter cross um, I have just started, I put in one length of thread of, um, this calls for, this is all DMC, um, and then in the center, the fill-in, you can't really see, is a sparkly, you can, maybe you can kind of see, it's a DMC light effects, and I don't mind working with it at all. I'm using two strands, and that makes it a bit easier for me, um, so I figured out a way to, to make it work, um, and so all I have left is to fill this in and put the beads on, and so... And then this one will be done too. And then I'm going to, I'm going to get them professionally finished uh, because I don't trust myself because they're a gift. If, it, if these were just for me, I would give it a try. Maybe <laughs> I say that. Um, but let me show you how it's finished in the magazine. And then I can, um, it'll give you an idea. So they have it finished as an ornament and I really, really like this. So again, see here are the big beads in those big spots. And they have a little tiny bead on top. But that's where my little beads just fell right through the hole, no matter what I did. I spent way too long trying to get it to work, too, that I was like, this isn't worth it. Uh, but I love how they, they, it's just like a flat ornament finish. And they have, a, it looks like a little hanging hoop, loop. Um, so I would like it finished as close to this as possible. Um, and so that's my goal. That I'm going to ask a finisher to finish. So. That is Easter Cross. Okay, and so hopefully that will be finished um, maybe next time you see me, maybe next week. So fingers crossed for that. Okay, next up was our seasonal Sunday piece. This is Winter Montage by Janet Stever. Um, it is charted by Pain Free Crafts, and Pain is spelled P A I N E. And I am up here in this first banner, or block. And I am working on this every Sunday during January, February, and March months. And then I will switch uh, to the spring one for the next three months. And we'll go on from there. So this is full coverage. And 
I work on this on Sundays and this is where I got to. So I did a bunch of fill in down here. So you can see this is all filled in. I have this, um, this one half leaf, but um, all this in between is now filled in. So you can kind of start to see the outline of this next leaf. I got 338 stitches in last Sunday and I am now at 1.55% done. So I'm very excited about that. And I do like, um, it'll be fun to get that other green leaf in there. Boy, this is going to take me a while. I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm going to have to figure out a way moving forward and like next year and the years to come, how to get more work on this because I mean, what I've been working on this almost two months, not straight, obviously, but like every Sunday <sighs> it's not, it's, I mean, 1.55% done. Um, and so I'll just show you again so you can get an idea. So I just barely have the outline of this first leaf done. I mean, look at this one, two, three, four, five. So I have six whole leaves yet to do plus another half leaf plus all of the brown in between, plus all of the, I think they're holly berries. EJ, you called them, you and Sheila called them cherries. I think they're supposed to be holly berries, not cherries. Not that I'm particular, I'm just saying. You guys are cute. So that's that band. And I mean, and then look at this one. Like talk about confetti. How much confetti do you think? That one is gonna be so long. Takes so long to do, but I think it's so pretty. So I'm gonna stick with it, of course. But I'm just saying, this one, I'm going to have to figure out a way to get more stitching done on it, like, next year. So, yeah, I'm already thinking about how to do that next year, for next year. I love it. I love it so much. It's just so pretty. And if you've seen EJ's on Sunshine Stitcher, she is doing the Janlin kit one, which is also gorgeous. It does not have the background, so she's using the fabric as the background, which makes total sense. Um, I think she's using country, vintage country mocha as her background, which is just kind of the perfect color. So we have hit the bottom. You can see I went a few stitches below. I just couldn't stop myself, but we have hit the bottom of that uh, first block. And so now I will be, so uh, I guess tomorrow on Sunday, I will be working on filling in this leaf and going from there. So I'm excited about this um, and yeah, it'll be fun. It's a really fun stitch. Okay, so then next up this week, I brought out your old friend and my old friend, Summer Quakers by Rosewood Manor. This is what it will look like when it's all done. This is probably my favorite of the of the series that I am doing. Um, I have already finished Spring Quakers and Autumn Quakers, and my goal for this year is to finish Summer and Winter, um, so then the series will be done. So that is my goal. This is, like I said, probably my favorite. I love these colors so much. I am using the Valdani threads there. Um, I love the colors. They are just so bright and beautiful. I will be taking off the alphabet here, so mine will only be go to there. And where did I work? I worked, I put on this B... I did these motifs over here. I started on this giant motif here. Oh my gosh, this motif is going to take forever. But then once that one's done, I mean, you're almost done. So this is on 28 count truffle by Picture This Plus. It is the called for uh, fabric. And so let me show you the whole thing and then I'll go in. So this is where we're at right now. Looking good. Um, And so I really need to get a board. So I put in this little bee. I did this motif here to finish up this larger center bee motif. And I did this one here too. I did this little three squares there. I think I had those in and then realized I was off and I had to rip them out. Um, and then I put in this motif. I started, this is the start of the big giant one. I put in these little flower petals floating through the air. And then I went over and I filled in this, these motifs up here and the little more flower petals. So next time I pull this out, there's a butterfly here, but I will probably go back and work in this big 
uh, that big motif. To finish up this page, so this is between pages five and six um, out of nine. So I'm going to bring this out. Um, I give it a four day rotation, which is about 12 hours each month until I get it done, except I I think I mentioned this last week, but I really want to get it done in the first half of this year. So it may need to get more, more time than that as we get closer to that. But my goal is if I can finish this in the first half of the year, which would be about summer, um, and then switch over to winter Quakers and finish that in the last half of the year. But I am further along on this one. So we'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best. That's all we can do is do our best. But I love that one. So that is everything that I worked on for this week. So it was a really fun week. Um, it was really fun to pull out Summer Quakers um, just with all the bright colors and everything. So that's a really, really fun one. Um, so I have just the tiniest bit of haul to share with you. Um, I got my number four in the Woodland Christmas Tiny Modernist um, series. This is uh, ornament number four. I'm doing all of mine on one big piece of fabric. I've done, I finished the first one, but I haven't pulled it back out since. Um, this is from Crazy Annie. So I'm in the auto ship program. I think it started November. So November, December, January, February. So this is number four. Cute little snowman there. Um, and then my friends, Andrea and Robin forced me to buy, um, Madame Lafie came out with some, I don't know if these are new actually. I just, we found them. I don't see a date on here. Um, we ordered them from Garon um, and I love them. And we're going to start them together probably in April. We haven't set a date yet, but if you want to uh, order these from Garon, you certainly can do that and start it with us. I'll, I'll update you here when we get um, more um details but this is blue flower I of course love it it has birds it has flowers and it's in blue I mean it's gorgeous a little teapot it's or teacup I guess it is it's 191 by 191 and the call for is DMC it's beautiful so I picked that up and then I also love this one this one La Duchia Du Jardin. I am so sorry. I should not try to pronounce that. It's like spring garden or something like that. It's a garden one. Um, and I love the colors and I mean, it's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I got that one. And then I was on Garon and this one has been on my wish list. And so I just threw it in since I'm already buying Madame Lafitte. This is uh, Noel. So I need another Christmas one. Beautiful, beautiful. Love it. So, um, these two, I'm not sure. Okay, this, these have numbers on them, actually. This is 152. The blue flower is 152. This one, the garden one, is 135. And Noel is number 167. It's on the back. So, you can, um, and these are all just DMC. So we haven't decided if we're going to start both of these or just one or the other yet, but I will keep you posted. Uh, but look for an April start for those, for at least one of those. So that's all my haul, um, which is fine because I put in my market order. And, whew, anyway, so that will be a big order coming. Okay, let's talk about plans now. So let me move my um, folders up here. So... March. March is coming. So next time I see you, it will be March already, which is my birthday month. And I'm so excited about that. Um, so my March plans. So um, for the 25-7, so 25-7 is a group um, hosted by Melanie Watkins of Soulful Stitching. You can search on Facebook for Cross Stitch 25-7. Cross is spelled out. It's not just the X, but Cross Stitch 25-7, the idea is that you stitch 25 minutes a day or 25 stitches a day. Um, and um, so that you just get some, I think it was originally just so you get some stitching in it. What it um, has turned into too is that um, I, for me, I've just added a piece. Like I have a specific piece that I work on that is my 25 sevens piece. And so um, 
because it's, and so I try to work on it for a month. I do get a little worn out on it, but I try to work on it a month, 25 minutes, which if I can do that, I end up getting around 12 hours of progress. And that's in addition to my regular stitching. So here is a bag. This is a Garon bag. I have another bag that was made for me. I think Mary made it for me. Um, I gave it to me at Pacific Northwest um, Stitch Retreat with the same, similar fabric. Um, and I have another project in that one. But this particular project is in here. Um, and this is going to be my 25-7 piece for March because it was a birthday start last year. I think it was a birthday start. Dreaming of Daisies by Rosewood Manor. Because as you know, daisies are my favorite flower. So... This will get some love this month, which will be really nice because I started it and then I haven't pulled it out since. Look at this little tiny start. Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. Look how pretty that is. So that's my start. I had the first motif done. <laughs> um, I'll do that little needle minder too. That's so cute. Okay, so I got that done. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find It's like Weeks Dye Works Floss. And the fabric is Storm by Cross Wing Collection. It is a 32 count Lugana. So I'll show it to you again. Daisy. So that will be super fun to get some more work done on that. And I kind of like this idea of, um, oh, I'm going to work on my birthday starts from years past during my birthday month. Next up, I think I showed you this last week saying I was going to work on it this week. I did not. Um, I think because I took an extra day to work on um, Lovebird so I could finish it up. But Jan Hicks creates Caroline's Balloons Winter. This is what that will look like. Um, my goal is to finish this in March. So you'll be seeing this quite a bit in March. This is stitched on, I think, a 32 count um, shark fin by... Um, Fortnite fabrics and last week I talked about how I'm going to change the color of these little snowflakes in the background there because um, they blend in with my fabric too much. Um, so this you will be seeing a lot until it's done. So that will be exciting to get that one done. And I believe she's coming out with spring at market. So I need to get, I'll grab a little hands on that one as well. Um, and then for the magazine monthly challenge, we have a theme and the theme, oh, I forgot to grab something. Please hold. I'll be right back. And I'm back. <laughs> forgot to grab this. So the theme for the month is needle workshop. So every theme for the year will be a place of some sort. Um, so needle workshop is our theme. And so I am going to work on now. This is kind of an interesting theme because it's kind of like, what are you going to do for that? You could stitch a needle workshop. You could stitch something that you got from a needle workshop on thread or with floss or something that reminds you of a needle workshop. I decided I'm going to stitch on blue Rhapsody because I need more Rosewood Manor in my life. This is going to be my birthday start, um, but it's also going to count for my theme. It is not a magazine, but that's okay. Um, I just need to find fabric, which I imagine I have something here at home that will, will work, depending on how big it is. I have the floss. So it is a bunch of skeins of Weeks Dye Works Sky. Sky. And several skeins of Weeks Dye Works Navy. So these are the two colors. But you could easily, candy, change this to be purple, look, it matches my shirt, <laughs> to be purple or pink or any, any color you like. Um, it's just two colors, like a darker and then like a variegated light to medium. That's it. That's what it is. So that will be, and I got this from Garan, and so it reminds me of my friends Gary and Ronnie. So that's how I'm tying it into the Nina workshop. Um, I got this pack of threads and this chart from Garan. I got these threads. I can't remember where I got them. Did I get my acorns? I might have gotten an acorn. So it's kind of like a perfect blend of my two favorite needle workshops. So 
that, so my birthday is actually on March 22nd. I'm going to start this March 21st because I like to give, try to give it three days. So I'll work on it the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. So that is my plan for that. Um, then our acrostic for the magazine monthly challenge, we have two options or you can do both. The first option is Etsy, E-T-S-Y, and the second option is Charge It. I'm going to do Charge It. Um, so it's a little bit longer. So another birthday start that I'm going to work on. Oh, I don't have a color copy of this one. Okay. Is Alpine Garden. I'll try to remember to put a picture here. If not, I'll try to show it to you next time. But Alpine Garden is my Chatelaine. Um, and I have the smallest start on it. I am going to need to stitch which way is up. Um, I am starting in the center. This is, well, why do it that way when I can do it this way? And I might go ahead and put this on my scroll rods. And I will film that because I know I've been asked to show how I use my scroll rods, which honestly, I don't use them very often. Um, but for a piece like this, it would be good. So you can start to see the tree and the evergreen or the mountains kind of coming in there. Um, so this will be great to give some more... Um, some more um, attention to because I barely have a start and I don't know this is probably summer khaki but I don't know what size it is looks like 32 count summer khaki maybe uh, I bought it as a kit from European cross stitch and so I just took what they gave me but you can see how big it's gonna be um, and how little I have done on it <laughs> so um, that is Alpine Garden, and that is going to be, for Charge It, it's going to be the C for Chatelaine. It'll be the A for Alpine, the G for Garden, and the T for Treat, because this was such a special treat for me to buy, because I bought the whole kit, and that is, um, you know, it's expensive. And so it's a big undertaking, so this was a very big treat for me. Um, I'm going to do Summer Quakers is going to be the R um, in Charge It for Rosewood Manor. So we, I just showed you that. Um, I'm going to pull back out, assuming I have time at the end of the month, Hearthside Christmas by Erica Michaels. And give us a few days, and this is going to be for the H in Charge It. Um, because I would like to finish this. And I am already thinking about my Jolly July plans. And so I would like to get this to a spot where I can finish it in Jolly July. Cat hair. So this is where I'm at. So not even quite halfway done yet, I don't think. So I really want to kind of push this forward a little bit more when I can so I can get it finished in July. And then I could get it framed and have it up for Christmas this year. And then you'll never have to hear about it again. <laughs> um, so that's Hearthside Christmas. Um, winter balloons, I am using for the I in Charge It because the designer, my dear friend Jan Hicks, lives in Idaho. So that's how I made that work. And then the E for Charge It is either Easter Cross, if I get it done this month, Easter Cross, which I don't know if I will, I might. Um, then I will do early bird bouquet, which is the birds. And I forgot, I did forget to pull that one. Um, so we'll see. And then of course, seasonal Sunday, I will continue working on winter montage. Um, I know spring technically starts for us in the Northern hemisphere. I think, I think the last Sunday in March is technically spring, but just for my own, um, organ brain organization, I am going to, um, um, just say through the month of March, I'm going to work on winter montage. And then the first Sunday in April, we'll switch to spring. So that will be fun and exciting to, to look forward to. So this week, what am I going to work on? Um, Easter cross is going to come out. I may get it done this month. I don't know though. We'll see. We'll see what I decide to do. I might just push it to finish that one and get it done this month. Um, Winter balloons, I'm going to pull it out like five different times before I see you next. So there should be a lot of progress on that one by, by the time you see it next time. Of course, winter montage and then dreaming of Daisy should get a little bit of work from, well, I'll see you next Saturday. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. 
So you'll see, what is that, like an hour and a half, maybe a little bit less of work on, on Dreaming of Daisies. But uh, So that will be fun. Um, it'll be fun to kind of switch over to the month of March. And um, please let me know if you have any questions. And please let me know if you're going to be joining me for Blue Rhapsody uh, or any of these other, I'm looking at my notes here, any of these other charts. There's just so many good charts and there's going to be a bunch more coming in. Um, so that will be fun. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great week. Stay safe, stay warm and dry. Uh, if you are in an area that's been impacted by blizzards, because I know it's a large portion of the country. So stay safe and I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.